One of the most frequent questions popping up in my videos is how do you train your posterior chain? This is a great question, as although many of the exercises in my training routine indirectly target the posterior chain, I haven't as of yet shown any ways to directly target this large group of muscles. Calisthenics also doesn't have the equivalent rival of the king of compound exercises, the deadlift. So, how do we go about training this important group of muscles? Stick around and find out. Posterior chain exercises have been shown to be more effective for alleviating back pain than general movement programs and walking interventions. So, if you're someone that suffers from back pain, then implementing some form of posterior chain exercises could be of benefit. Posterior chain strength doesn't only benefit those with back pain. A strong posterior chain is also essential for day-to-day -day movements, such as walking, running, jumping, and changing directions, to name a few. Maintaining a strong posterior chain also has longevity benefits through preventing age-related muscle loss. The posterior chain is a large group of muscles that chain links together on the back of the body. It includes the traps, lats, rear delts, erector spinae, glutes, hamstrings, and calves. Working this large group of muscles in conventional lifting is relatively simple, as we have the all-encompassing movement, the deadlift. The deadlift effectively incorporates and stimulates almost all of the muscle groups in the posterior chain. In calisthenics, unfortunately, we don't exactly have the equivalent. The good news is that there is no shortage of exercises that effectively target this large group of muscles. Drinking birds. This movement is a hip hinge exercise that essentially mimics a stiff leg deadlift while also incorporating balance as it is performed on one leg. It is a great calisthenics option for targeting your glutes and hamstrings. I've also seen this movement commonly performed with additional weight, such as a kettlebell. So if you need to increase the challenge at some point, then this is a great option. Reverse hypers. Reverse hypers target the erector spinae, which is the group of muscles that runs along the lower back and is involved in hyperextension and flexion movements of the spine. The limiting factor is the range of motion and difficulty in overloading the movement safely. So I'd suggest using this as a warm up and to maintain general strength in the lower back. Pull ups and their many variations. I don't need to speak too much on the king of back exercises. Pull ups primarily target the lats and in my opinion are the king of all back exercises. So if they aren't already a staple in your training routine, I highly suggest throwing them in, unless of course you are unable to do so due to existing injuries or limitations. There are endless variations to keep you progressing, or you can simply overload through throwing some rocks or full water bottles in a backpack. Face pulls. A lot of beginners don't realize that almost every gym exercise, whether it's cable, machine, or compound movements, can be easily replicated using cheap, entry-level equipment, or if you're on a budget, then you can get creative and use common household items such as a towel or some ropes. This exercise primarily targets the rear delts, but also incorporates some upper lats and traps to some degree, as they aid in the function of external rotation throughout the movement. This is an incredible option for those looking to strengthen their rear delts with some additional accessory work. And like most calisthenic movements, it is highly adaptable. A greater incline will make the movement substantially easier and more beginner friendly. Whereas a lower incline with your body more parallel to the ground will challenge the more advanced athletes. Rows and their variations. Rows primarily target the upper lats. They are also a great stepping stone exercise toward pull-ups. If you are not yet able to perform a pull-up due to strength limitations, then through consistently working rows, you'll likely build the strength needed to unlock your first pull-up. Just like most of the other exercises on the list, there is also no shortage of variations and ways to progress. Just like with face pulls, you can simply adjust the incline to adjust the difficulty level. And finally, the ultimate lower body posterior chain exercise, the Nordic Curl. I left this till last because if I'm honest, it's not a movement I'm able to perform yet. It requires an insane amount of strength across the posterior chain, especially through the hamstrings and glutes. Props to anyone who's unlocked this exercise, because goddamn, it is not an easy feat to achieve. It's also not without its risks, so make sure you properly pad the knees to avoid injury, and approach the more advanced movements with caution. Always warm up appropriately, and never try to rush the process, as this is a surefire way to cause an injury. 
I don't hear it discussed enough that one of the biggest limitations to progress is injury. Injuries take time away from training while you're recovering, and then additional time to rehabilitate the area, which could potentially mean months off training, stealing progress and time. Avoiding injuries and setbacks is one of the best ways to ensure consistent progress. Don't get it twisted though, I'm not saying don't train hard. I'm saying that when you do choose to train hard, combine it with training smart as well. People often say, work smart, not hard. But I'd say working hard is smart as long as it aligns with your goals and points you in the direction you want to go. If this long list of effective calisthenic exercises for the posterior chain still doesn't quite meet your needs, then of course you can take a more hybrid approach and throw in some deadlifts into your existing routine. This way, you're essentially getting best of both worlds. If you don't have access to a barbell or gym membership, then get creative and lift some heavy objects you can find out in nature, such as logs, rocks, or any other form of resistance you can get your hands on. Training this large chain of muscles has been shown to be a great way to prevent back pain and alleviate any existing back pain. It's also a crucial aspect of longevity and maintaining muscle mass as we inevitably age. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. And of course, as always, drop any questions, comments, or abuse down below. Cheers.